Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D modeling video. Today I decided to go through my Pinterest and look at a couple cute things for ideas. I was thinking about those hamsters with eggs on it because that's super cute to me and there's so many ideas on here. But I ultimately went with the cat in between two pancakes. And as you can see, I already had like a cat idea in the process, but I just decided to go with this because I just wanted to start over with something new. And we're not starting off in Nomad Sculpt for the first part, just because I actually, when I'm designing my ideas, if they're completely from myself, I do use Procreate to sketch these ideas out. And as you can see, I do turn this cat a little bit different, so it's a little bit more my style versus what you see in the photo. Because I do prefer bigger eyes, I prefer, you know, just a little bit more me. I didn't actually, I end up going with some syrup on the cat as well, since these are pancakes, and I don't draw that, but I do end up making some syrup on the kitty cat's face, or its hat, its pancake hat. So yes, so then I export this into a PNG because I like PNG versus JPEG. I have no idea why, but PNG is just where it's at. And you don't have to go super hard on the details. Something sim simplistic that you can recreate in Nomad Sculpt. So again, I get rid of the sphere. I add a new sphere before and before, of course, I add the reference photo so I can see what I'm doing. And we just start by sculpting the sphere down into more of a pancake shape. I know there's another way to do this, a little easier way, but I'm not really sure how to do it. So I just use the flat tool, flattening tool, to kind of give it more of a flat side. I don't know else how to explain that. So I'm re renaming things just so it's easier to remember what I'm working with and then using the clone to just make things a little bit easier. Um, it speeds your workflow way up if you can clone things and reuse objects. Then I'm going in with the ears, just using a sphere and then stretching it out and then using the move tool to make it more triangular and more cat-like. And of course, voxel remeshing over and over again, you know me and then smoothing it out so it's nice and smooth and not any of those weird little square thingy mabobs. And uh, my trusty mask tool for extracting the eyes. And I actually select the whole, um, all the objects, let me say that. I ex uh, handle all the objects and I make them bigger just because I think I can get the pixels better. And I had to redo the eyes a couple times just because I forgot that the symmetry tool was on Y axis and Z or X and Z. I can't remember, but it was doing it on its like backside and I don't need four eyes, you know? So, but yeah, so we do all that and I actually Boolean the... I make a double of the eyes and boolean it so that you can have like a indent so it's more realistic looking or I'm not sure what you would say if it's realistic or not but I like doing that with my models for the eyeball so they're just not sticking on top of the face so it looks like it's sitting in the face versus that. And I'm also do the same thing pretty much with the mouth. That is what I've learned that I've liked. I extract some of the, the mouthpiece. So the mouth is actually open versus just like a line drawing on the face. And then I smooth that out and see it's like really, really cute. And I really like that. So then we're going in on making his little teepees and I, that is not in the original reference photo, but I thought like, of course, cats have really cute teeth, little, little things for them to chomp on things or yourself or not yourself, but on you, you know, when they get too excited, they like do a little love bite. That's what I call it. 
but yeah, I thought adding teeth would be so cute. And then I had to redo the bottom pancakes that I just didn't feel like it was working out for me. And eventually I do get something that I like. I had to retry with the square and all this, but it ended up not working how I expected it to. I really need to go back into a tutorial and figure out how to make a perfect pancake. <laughs> With those big sides and they're more like the Japanese pancakes or wherever they originate in Asia those little big little big those big fluffy pancakes that are just very aesthetically pleasing and then we go in for the whiskers I tried using the mask tool but I think the way the squares or triangles are aligned it was just not working how I wanted it to it's very pixelated so I just used to end up using the tube tool and you know what, it worked out easy and I will go for that the next couple of times instead of always using my tried and true masking tool. But yeah, just clone the second one so I don't even have to like really work with it. I just adjust it so it's sitting on the face versus out in the open and then easy pat of butter. I round out the sides by messing with, I'm not really what, sure what it's called, I have to relook into it, but you can mess with some of the settings before validating it so it's more rotund versus like a square. And then I go in and make the syrup, and this I do use my masking tool because it's just way easy to use some uh, draw on the syrup and then extract it and move it to how you want it because like look at that, that is just super perfect and you can just use the move tool and luckily syrup you it's not perfect in general so you can make it messy or whatever but you can make it really look like a drip and of course my favorite part is getting into coloring I do boolean on the ears so it looks like they're attached versus just sitting on the face it's actually like coming off of the cat versus just like ears not what I was going for, so we like that. Then I'm also quad remeshing them or quad something or other, so there's less vertices and the computer's not using so much RAM. It does speed up that in that sense. It's best to do that at the end when your details are done, just so in case you do need a higher voxel count for details, you can do that at the end so it's not messing everything up. And then making the syrup how I want it to look. And look at that butter. It looks so yummy. I want to eat it. But no, you don't want to eat the kitty cat. It's too sweet. As in like, uh, nice. Not like, yummy. Flavored? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. But yeah, then I go into coloring and then all that good stuff. You know, blending it out. I hate when it's like just flopped on there. There's no blending going on. It just makes it look so much better when you can smooth it out and I can show you guys if you want to if you're using no sculpt and I use this tool called the smoothie it's literally I remade the smoothing tool so it doesn't actually affect the actual object it only affects the paint or the color that is on the object it helps blend it out a little more and I was having some difficulty coloring the pancake or whatever hot cake in the way I wanted it to, I was like getting really frustrated and then I realized, oh, I can just do it like this and th these colors. It was the coloring, it was the choosing what colors I should use and an orangey yellow versus like a brown worked a lot better with the tan color of the actual pancake, the main color of the pancake. So did all that and there he is. And I think I go back into the eyes because I was like, this is, Oh, I see I do the ears and I'm, it's just not working. It's like, ugh. So I color the cat with some extra colors. Like he's got a little, he's like a little burnt marshmallow, toasted marshmallow. He's not really burnt because I would be, we're, I would think brown. But yeah, I added some colors to his pupils. So it's a little bit more pretty, I guess. And I actually make it green metallics just so the, it's shiny. I like when it's shiny. And then just the basic stuff, you know, the adding lighting so it looks a little bit more realistic. I'm not sure how a pancake cat would look realistic since they don't exist in reality. 
So, but making it just look better with the lighting, playing with the colors. I actually never know what colors to choose. So I honestly just go around the color wheel and just kind of guess whatever I like. I do really like red from below for some reason. I'm not sure why, it just looks good. I usually turn shadows off except for one main sun or something like that because I, when it gets so many shadows, it slows it down. And it just looks kind of weird when you see all the shadows from different angles. And I know that's not really how light works, but that's how I like it. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a specific way. But there we go, there's our little, little, little pancake hat. Yeah, the metallic eyes. I like it when it's shiny. And I just smooth it out some more so it's not just like plopped in there. And then I go into the presets. I mess around with one of my favorites. I've been really liking it, li likening? Liking this, I'm not sure what it is, but it, it adds like an outline. So it's kind of like more of an, not, it doesn't look like an illustration, but it has an outline like an illustration and I just really like it. So I've been doing that and I actually mess with the curves a little, little bit this time. I usually don't touch that, but something about the, just the presets or whatever preset I had made was just like not giving what I wanted. So I just messed around. You can always reset it. So it's okay if you like mess it up or you don't like it, you just hit the reset the little swirly arrow and there we go i do add a tail on him i just used the inflate tool on his butt that sounds wrong but um that's what i did and it just makes a little 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 nub tail so it's not like a big long cat tail but just a little nub tail of course a voxel ring mesh can make it a little bit better or something smoother and there you go, that's really him. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a suggestion. Bye!